In our last video, we discussed how we can leverage the power of declarative pipelines and how this pipeline can be replayed and how the deployment of interactive deployments can all happen, all those stuff. And we also discussed a different types of syntaxes over here. So we also saw if I do a git pull over here, you can see that we performed an interactive operation, something like this, and all those stuff happens for us very, very easily. And let's say if I want to create a file and then if I want to make an archive of that particular file and then if I want to create an artifacts for that, we can do that as well with this particular declarative pipeline. And this is also something you can do from the UI itself. So if I, let's say once the test has been executed, let's say if I want to create a stage where I want to create, a, a, let's assume that this is the test log which has been created. So test log, uh, something like that. And the step that I'm going to be creating is a file. There is something called as write file to the workspace. I'm just going to choose that. And let's say I'm going to say a log test file dot txt, something like that. And I'm going to say this is an automated or maybe automation file, something like that. You can specify the UTF-8 or UTF-16 and coding if you want. I'm not going to be doing all those kind of thing right now uh let's say this is the one thing which i'm going to be doing and if i want to also make an archive i can also do that as well let's quickly do a save uh, and run this and we can talk about the archive a bit we'll first see if that particular file is being generated for us so you can see that the execution is happening and do you want to proceed i'm just going to say yes and if I go to the test log over here, you can see that it has actually created a test log file. You cannot actually see that in the artifacts if you go over here. Basically within the artifact, you can only see the pipeline log, but there is no file that we have created is actually being displayed. And that's the reason I actually saved it. So now if I want to see that particular text file that we just created, which is nothing but the uh, log test file.txt, I can actually create what is called as an artifact file. So once the deployment is done, I need to create an artifact. So let's say if I want to do an artifacts uh, creation. So let's search for artifacts. You can see there is something called as archive the artifacts. I can choose this particular step and I'm gonna give the name of the file, which is nothing but the log, fi log test file dot txt. And I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna hit save run. I guess this is log test file. That's what I gave as the name of the file and I'm executing the test. So the build is now waiting for us to proceed the deployment. I'm just going to hit proceed and let's go to the artifact this time. And you can see that we have this log test file and the content of the log test file is going to be the content that we just gave within the particular file itself. So you can see that this is also happening for us automatically, which is pretty cool. So now if I just do a git pull over here with my Visual Studio code, you can see that the syntax is write file of the file, which is nothing but the log test file.txt. And this is the text that we have gave. And let's do one more thing. So let's say if I want to access the environment variable, which is nothing but the Chrome driver path as well, I can do that as well within this particular file itself. So let's put this uh, as double quotes going to paste this over here and then if I try to run this it should work as well and this proves the point that for each and every step we can actually use the environment variables that we have and we can leverage the power of it pretty much like a coding standard within this Jenkins file which is pretty pretty cool you can also get some of the variables from one stage and then you can pass that to another stage using environment variable or you can create your own local environment variable stages and you can print that as well. For instance, if I want to create an environment over here, and this is called as local variable, which is gonna be hello local. So this is the value that I'm gonna be taking. So this is the automation file log, or maybe I just change the content a bit. This is the automation, uh, this is Chrome driver path, and I'm gonna say, and local variable value is gonna be, local variable something like that i'm just gonna save this added write file content and let's do a git push so it would have added on the git without any doubt 
and now if I go back to the Jenkins and go to the branch and if I try to execute this you can see the conditional waiting is coming over here let's do proceed and let's go to the artifacts if I go to the log test file this time you can see that it shows me the Chrome driver path from the environment variable which is the common environment variable and the local variable which is coming from the local environment that we just created over here so the environment is now specific to the local environment variable within the stage for the particular step or you can also take the common environment which can be used across all the stages and steps so this is the power of the declarative pipeline syntax itself it is too much powerful and we can do a lot of things over here and now let's say if I want to perform another conditional operation within my Jenkins for instance okay let me close these windows because there are so many windows already opened uh, and if I go to the Jenkins pipeline over here and let's say if I want to edit this and let's say if there is a scenario where I need to perform a deployment only if my application branch is of the master branch not from any other branch so basically in order to demonstrate this we need to at least have another branch let's say a development branch or something like that to see this particular scenario in action so if I just do something like this I'm gonna make some changes uh, on the uh, on this particular uh, branch something like that in the uh, Jenkins so I'm gonna commit to a new branch that is the most easiest way that I can really think of and then I'm gonna hit save and run so basically what I'm trying to do this time is I'm just gonna create a new branch called development branch from the master branch and I'm just gonna run our code and I'm gonna see like what are the changes that I have made is gonna execute or not so once you see that once I try to execute this code uh, you can see that now I have two execution happening one is in the master branch and another one is on the development branch so I need to uh, basically run both the branch interactively this time which is kind of crazy so I can also make sure that if it is a development branch I don't really need to do this interactive operation each and every time only if it is a master branch do a deployment if not don't even do a deployment of my application something like that so this is kind of a condition where I have uh, brought in this time and because we have now two branches the blue ocean theme might have already picked up two branches for us over here automatically which is also pretty cool so now you can independently run on two different pipelines same time so this is also one of the power guys this is what I was telling while I was talking about the Jenkins pipeline itself using the Jenkins file this is so powerful it automatically knows that your code now has two branches one is the develop branch and another one is the master branch and Jenkins will automatically works for you for both the pipeline regardless of you to create that separately whereas in the freestyle project or in the pipeline project earlier you should be creating that manually for each and every branches of your repository well as I said we now have a development branch so if I do uh, if I just go to the Visual Studio code you can see that it automatically takes for us and now if I just go to uh, let's say a development branch over here this is the remote branch I have checked out uh, the code to the development branch over here and what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna perform a conditional operation of the deployment this time so you can do a deployment operation only if it is going to be a development branch so there is something called as a when where I'm just gonna say if the branch is gonna be a master branch so only if it is a master branch you do the deployment if it is gonna be something like a development branch don't even worry about it right so I'm just gonna uh, save this guy but later we can also merge this within the development master branch itself so I'm just gonna save this guy right now so I'm just gonna check in this particular code add it when condition and I'm gonna do a git push so you can see that we are working with a Jenkins as if like a code this time which is also pretty cool and now if I go over here to the development branch you can see that there is this Jenkins file and it shows you that there is a when statement where this when statement will now evaluate only if it is going to be a master branch then you do a deployment if not don't even run this particular stage something like that 
So if I just go to the development branch, run this time, you can see what's going to basically happen. Oops, sorry about that. You can see that it tells me that this particular when is actually wrong because the error information is not that clear anyways, but it tells you that this when is actually throwing you an error in the workflow script. Well, this has happened for a specific reason, and I will tell you how you can actually resolve this problem in a more and more intuitive manner in our upcoming videos. But yes, you got the idea right now. We have a failure in the Jenkins file. We now have to resolve this. But in order to resolve this, please bear with me for our next video. Stay tuned. Talk to you in our next video. Thank you.